And so we might ask, well, why do we treat pain? Well, there are a variety of different reasons that we treat pain. We certainly, first and foremost, I think, focus on the patient and their quality of life. Uh, we, if we can improve their experience of pain and relieve the pain and symptom burden that they have, then we can favorably impact their quality of life. On a mundane level, we have to comply with a variety of different standards and guidelines from various regulatory agencies, including the Joint Commission. And so uh, uh, we, we uh, uh, provide uh, adequate pain assessment and management on an ongoing basis for patients to satisfy those requirements. We'll come back to those in just a moment. And finally, there are, there are long-standing moral and ethical reasons that we uh, should treat pain. And, and uh, you know, dating back to the Hippocratic Oath, uh, the Maimonides uh, context, and so on, uh, pain is, and pain and suffering are key components of the, the medical healing relationship. In Western culture, based upon Kagawa Singer's uh, work, we know that, that one of the cornerstones uh, values in medical decision making is that no one should suffer. So clearly, pain is integrally bound to this concept that no one should suffer from unrelieved pain. A variety of those ethical principles and duties are listed here. These, uh, these are the four so-called Georgetown principles. Non-maleficence basically is that primum non nocere, the first do no harm concept, and then the concept of beneficence uh, means to do something good for the patient or to prevent some sort of harm from occurring to them. So we first want to do no harm and, and closely attached to that we want to do something good for them. In, the, in Western culture we recognize the the dignity of the autonomous individual and, and their role in, their, in determining their own life and course of action in their life, and that includes medical decision making. So it's, uh, it's imperative that we, that we recognize the autonomous individual in our decision making process. And then the fourth principle is the concept of social justice, that as many of us as possible should have access to the best care that's available and uh, that there shouldn't be any favored uh, groups or classes that we all should have access in, in our situation to the best pain care that's available. And we try to provide this in our role as pain physicians. Uh, these other um, principles and duties are listed as well and enter into our decision making process whenever we're uh, wrestling with dilemmas in the care of patients, especially those with advanced disease. Just a quick look at excerpts from the Joint Commission standards. Uh, the standards uh, mandate that pain is assessed in all patients because patients have a right to appropriate assessment and management of pain. Institutions have to support this guideline with, uh, uh, with activities and education that promotes um, pain assessment and management among the staff throughout the continuum of care from the, the time of admission to the hospital through the course of the hospitalization and then on beyond uh, to the outpatient follow-up setting. And in the, the cancer world, the Institute of Medicine in 2003 issued this statement that I think summarized our philosophy in our, our uh, practice arena. Uh, the Institute of Medicine stated that a priority area for national action was to ensure that patients facing incurable and progressive cancer can count on living without serious pain through the end of life. And we, in our practice, uh, focus upon this as our goal for each and every patient that we encounter. Back to the Hippocratic Oath and how it's encoded in the AMA medical ethics statement as well. You know, the, I will use treatment to help the sick, the, the beneficence to do something good according to my ability and judgment, but never with a view to injury and wrongdoing, first do no harm. And, and then that was further codified by the AMA, talking about the social commitment of the physician being to relieve suffering. So clearly we have tremendous uh, uh, ethical and regulatory and other um, support for the appropriate assessment and management of pain for all those who suffer it.